So speaking of uh, Starship, uh, SpaceX made a little bit more progress with their with their serial number four. Serial number four has kind of gone through the ringer, which is um, which is exciting that it, we're actually seeing one. Um, what's that called? Yeah, aren't the, aren't the other starships kind of stacking up behind it, kind of waiting for their turn? Yeah, they are. At this point, we're, for once, we're finally seeing one get tested over and over and not totally blow up. Um, here is a video that uh, that I had with the uh, with my friends Rachel and Jean from um, Es Padre. So they recorded this for me. Here's slow mo. This was a successful seven second static fire. Um, everything looked really good, and yeah. Um, that was a good sign because they are still planning to do the 150 meter hop with this vehicle. Last we heard, although it did have a little, um, a little fire go afterward. Let me show you. This is Lab Padre stream after the static fire. Um, there was a nice little fire here coming out of the bottom, and the whole <laughs> bottom appeared to be on fire. Yeah, you know, mm. that's not the good kind. Like not the you know coming out of the engine, not the flaming end down. There's like chunks of flaming stuff coming off of that. That pad, yeah, on the left over there. So they definitely had a a, a pad fire. Some some ground service equipment <laughs> got a got oh got a little bit burnt up, and um, it ended up getting to the point where you know they're they're shooting fire hoses at it and everything. Yeah, to put it out. They're like, wait, so. who made this out of wood? <laughs> Why, guys? That's not what the spec sheet Which said. Which little piggy built this out of wood? <laughs> But so that was unexpected, and that we do think has delayed a little bit the 150 meter hop. It doesn't seem like it was anything like super damaging. Don't forget, Star Hopper lit itself on fire huge before it was its first hop. Do you guys remember that at all? Oh, before its hop. Before yeah. its hop. Yeah, it, it was like I forgot about that. it was like crazy. So I mean, if if Star Hopper survived here, let me show you guys. If Star Hopper survived this, uh, <laughs> then this is just I think this is just what what's destined to happen with. With uh, these vehicles before, you know, before they launch, it's just part of their, um, <laughs> you know. Oh wait, uh, yeah, here we go. This is the the giant fireball that inflamed it. Hold on, look at this. It was it must be nuts. I mean, because how many people live in Boca Chica? Like fifty? Um, no, everyone's ev- basically evacuated now, except for like oh. very, very, very few residents. Yeah. But you know, this is just this is just battle scars. This is what it takes to be a starship vehicle. That's, you have to light yourself on fire. That's the kind of explosion you want to walk away from in slow motion, <laughs> without <laughs> yes. looking back. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Screw you, screw you, Jake Roper. That's how it actually. That's reality. I don't <laughs> care about this movie stunt business. You that, well, do. But that was actually, the version of Star Hopper that Michael Bay designed. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Actually, this is a, this is low energy. This is not an explosion. You know, oh, this is a, a fire, kinda. just a fire. Yeah, that's why you don't you didn't hear it even like it was a super quiet event. An explosion is the type of thing that'll kill you like a big fireball yeah. like this will burn you. But an explosion would kill you or, you know, destroy the vehicle. Um, and obviously the same thing with Starship. So. so my concern, I was thinking about Starhopper when I saw this fire at the end of this test, um, because when Starhopper did its actual hop, Something happened at the end. I know you know this better than I do, but like the the engine started blowing differently, and it it kind of blew out the engine, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was my well. So that was my concern because I know that the Raptor is a whole new the 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 full flow stage combustion. Do I say that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, hey, look at me. Yeah, uh, but it's a whole <laughs> new thing, and and they're still kind of getting their feet wet on it. And my concern when I saw that fire on SN four was, oh crap, do we have a Raptor problem? Because right. it's catching things on fire, but you were saying it, it's not that that it caught something else that was not uh, it wasn't hadn't didn't have anything to do with the raptor. From what we know, that that was like a ground service equipment, like the the, the fueling pipes, you know, like connecting to the rocket to fill it up. Yeah, uh, something burst or broke or something there, and it's just not as uh, it's not as bad of a deal as something going wrong with the raptor. That we know of. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, we mm-hmm. obviously don't have cameras pointed up like SpaceX does. SpaceX obviously knows exactly what happened. Yeah. But we are seeing a little delay. Um, we are hoping to see the launch 150 meter hop happen like today. And that all has been called off. Uh, today being Thursday for those of you listening. Uh, yeah, so who knows? The Raptor is definitely still, I think they've officially tamed it. You know, they've got a lot of progress done 
They've made, I think the one that launched um, Starhopper was serial number six, maybe serial number eight. Yeah. I don't quite remember. Well, they've it was... been testing it at McGregor for, for years. So, I mean, I'm, right. I'm sure that I'm, well, re- I'm, I'm worrying over nothing. Well, but... I mean, no, you're, you're right to, you know, you're, you're right to, to do that because I mean, honestly, before Starhopper, they had only made like serial number one, two, and three were kind of the ones they were working on um, at the end of 2018, right? They, that was when they first were really, here's like our production version of Raptor. We're going to start firing up. Serial number six is what flew on, on Starhopper, at least um, for the first one. I don't remember if they ended up going with serial number um, eight or whatever. But here's the, here's the crazy thing is uh, now they're at like probably around serial number 30. Yeah. They've experienced a, just in the past year, they've built, you know, one or two or basically two a month. Wow. And they've really been experiencing a lot more. You know, they're firing these things basically daily out at McGregor, right. gaining a ton more experience in the last year than they, than they had at this point last year. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. So hopefully it's like tamed now. Hopefully they know how to actually run this engine. And once they totally do get this engine figured out, it, it, in theory, even though it's a really complicated system, um, it puts less stress on the internals of the engine in order to make the same amount of power. Like if, you know, if this is making the same amount of power as a closed cycle engine or an open cycle engine, uh, it would, it, everything runs actually cooler, even though it's under higher pressure because hmm. of the way the whole thing works. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's all, it's all up here. <laughs> I still don't, that's the type of thing I don't quite understand. It's, it's insane when people tell me like, yeah, it actually, like it's easier on the engine. I'm like, how? Oh, it's like, <laughs> 300 bar pressure. It's like the highest internal pressure of anything. I, I just see it constantly, you know, but they're like, well, actually it's a little, not as simple as, you know, it's like, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Help me. Well, speaking of experimental power engine mm. technologies. Ooh. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is exciting to me. Um, not that Raptor engines aren't exciting. Of course. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, the Department of Energy is investing in some next generation nuclear technologies. Yes. As I scroll on the top of this thing that I didn't have up. Um, yeah, so this is in popular mechanics that says means tinier, better reactors in the near future. So uh, the Department of Energy, the DOE, and their Office of Nuclear Energy, the ONE, uh, is launching a project called the Advanced Reactor Demonstration Program, or the ARDP. So the DOE. The, the ONE at the DOE has started the ARDP. Are we all, <laughs> are we all good on that? Okay. Yep. Yep. Derp. Yeah. Derp <laughs> <laughs> so the reason why I'm excited about this, and, and I've definitely got a video in the works eventually about next gen nuclear technology. Um, you know, if we're going to be talking about creating green energy, um, nuclear has to be part of that. And it's gotten a bad rap for multiple reasons. We've all seen Chernobyl, but um, the, the, most of the reactors that are out there right now are working on like 60s and 70s technology. It's so far behind. Um, and it's all like generation one and generation two reactors. So it says right here, gen one reactors are developed in the 50s and 60s. Gen two were typified by the present U.S. and French fleet. So yeah, we're on gen two right now. And they're going to be working on generation three and four. And what these basically mean, and this is what I find interesting. So it says, the technical difference may be arbitrary, but the advanced reactors are often safer, smaller, and overall form factor, and more standardized in order to be easier to install and scale. So, believe it or not, right now, nuclear reactors are just kind of a one-off thing. Like, there's no, like, standardized nuclear reactor that anybody, well, not anybody, but they can just be set up somewhere and be I more easily regulated. I saw one at Ikea last time. Mm. There was just, you know, but, but basically it was so hard to put together, everyone, you know. It was it was react with an umlaut over the a and a k instead of a c yeah, mm-hmm. um, but yeah so yeah, you're right, so because, because they aren't standardized the they're that... they're it's more difficult to to regulate them and make sure that they're they're safe and right. uh, more easy to install and everything so that's what they're trying to do here so they're investing a hundred okay here's what gets me the two hundred thirty million dollar program will give one hundred sixty million to scientists working on two reactor designs that can be operational in the very near future. What's going to happen to that extra $70 million? Overhead. I don't know. Advertising. <laughs> <laughs> Management. Overhead. I don't cost know. and con- cost plus contract. I guess. Oh, man. Yeah. No, but this is fantastic news, though. And it seems mm-hmm. like the, uh, the idea is basically to make like a really common 
reactor and and if you need more power you use multiple reactors it's like here you go here's 10 of these for yeah, your grid it's modular mm. yeah Which, so so this is a the one that's on screen right now sorry to the people who are just listening but uh it's from a company called new scale um it says it's kept cool by circulating normal fresh water which is normal uh in a much much larger oh, sorry sorry uh, inside the huge da, da 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 da, the new scale reactor uses gravity and buoyancy to naturally circulate the cooling water. Um, hmm. So it's got sort of more of a, a natural process to it, I guess, or it's like uh, a passive. Yeah. Mm. Um, but I'm excited about this. I have actually been kind of I've I've teased a, a new next generation nuclear video for a while, and uh, I actually have had a couple of people reach out to me from Terra Power and from the National Institute of Energy National Institute NIE. Anyway, yeah, I've had some people reach out to help me out with that, which is really cool. But um, awesome. enough about me. Uh, <laughs> Terra this Power is, sounds super interesting. That's the Bill Gates yeah, company, right? Yeah, that's Bill uh, Gates. That's the traveling wave reactor. Yeah. And the cool thing about it is that it's using nuclear waste for its uh, energy source, right? So instead <laughs> of having to get new plutonium or whatever, I think they're doing that. I I want to be sure. I'm, I don't want to mistake um, but there are some technologies out there that uh, are doing exactly that and that, that's that's another one of those things is you know the big concern about nuclear energy is you have this nuclear waste that you can't do anything with and you got to store it for thousands of years but with these next generation technologies you can actually use that yeah so there's there's actually fuel for that mm -hmm. that exists so um that's, cool. that's yeah. really cool i definitely yeah. think um after i, I talked to tom Tom Mueller, the uh, head of uh, VP of uh, propulsion at SpaceX, he's the guy that like invented the Merlin engine, basically. Sweet. Um, and now he's working a lot on in situ resource utilization, mm -hmm. and he's a huge proponent of nuclear. He's like, mm. why we're not just you know using nuclear for Mars and everything, and using it to you know be able to have, live sustainably here on Earth? He's like super on board, and I just asking him a bunch of questions about it. I'm like, oh, that does make total sense. Yeah, yeah. It's unfortunate that nuclear has gotten the rap that it has. Um, if if you're interested in it, there's a video, there's a movie called uh, Pandora's Promise. I think it's called Pandora's Promise that um, explores nuclear. And it, you know, the the green movement kind of turned against nuclear, which is unfortunate because it's one of the greenest zero emissions. Yeah, yeah right. If we're going to be line. creating that, right. Um, so anyway, it's that that's exciting to me that when I when I saw that, Tim, you actually shared that. I'll, you need like the training. SpaceX version of this, right? Because I mean, even today, well, until next week, the rockets that humans are going up to the ISS on are also from the 50s and 60s. If I'm not too off on that, like the Soyuz, you know, yeah. there's been I iterations mean, on it, but yeah. yeah, right. But it's just it's very so you know, yeah. I think you need kind of that disruption. Um, mm -hmm. So that's cool. Well, 260 the, million just doesn't sound like a lot to me, though. You know. That's like how much that's like how much the city of San Diego put up for small businesses for the COVID relief. <laughs> you know, it's mm, like Right. <laughs> oh yeah, it's gonna save the entire planet. How much do we need? Uh, I don't know. Like right. <laughs> something that wouldn't even bother Elon Musk's bank account. Like I think we could maybe up that, hopefully. <laughs> I think it's the you job know? done. Well, yeah, I'm all for efficiency, a use of capital, but it just doesn't sound like enough. So hopefully I'm wrong on that well, hopefully awesome. we'll see something come out of it i mean they, they've already got some um uh, some projects in the work here um I, just the, the part of it that, that got me i mean i already said that a second ago was that the it's not a standardized process right now atomic atomic energy it's just well that's where <laughs> yeah it's see i think there's a lot of that like in fact back i don't know if we talked about it on the show but the whole elon or tesla leaving california thing I was like, there's no way they're going to move the factory. There's zero chance. Like, all of that stuff was custom built for that specific place. Mm -hmm. You can't mm -hmm. just, like, pick it up and drop it somewhere else. Because <laughs> there's, like, all kinds of stuff, like, underground that has to be done in order to handle, like, like the stamping machine is three stories tall. I don't know if you guys have seen there, but it's literally, like, a, three, uh, a plain sheet of aluminum comes in, a three-story building comes crashing down upon it, <laughs> <laughs> and out comes the a, a, a door panel or something. It's not exactly like a uh, a plug and play system, you know. Yeah. And you're like, could you imagine trying to ship that stuff to Texas? That would take months, if not a full year. 
Mm-hmm. It's it's not just something you can just like, oh, let me just move my house. Let me get some boxes and I'm gone. <laughs> you know. Right. Um. So I think there's a lot of things like that. Like I'm I'm sure rockets are probably that way too. You probably couldn't just like move the SpaceX factory. You know. Right. I guess before they could move anything from Fremont, they would have to have another factory set up, wouldn't they? They would. Yeah. That's not the transition I'm looking for, though. Uh, I well, appreciate you, though. Can I can I jump in one more time with <laughs> nuclear reactors, though? Uh, would, don't forget, like the for instance, Chernobyl, which of course I think everyone saw the show Chernobyl. But the uh, you know that was a pretty common reactor was the RBMK reactor. You know, it was kind of a, mm-hmm. a a standardized reactor between all these. You know, they had them all throughout the Soviet Union, basically as like this cheap and and simple system but uh it's kind of been standardized in that sense but never to the point of like really localized standardization that's just like here boop, 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 no big deal you know and it's time we just yeah make a 21st century nuclear yeah do it hey guys thanks so much for watching this clip from our show if that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode you can go to olfpod.com slash yt and if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks, everyone, for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.